Hello there, people of the internet. So I have a very interesting concept video for you guys today. Of course, this is completely opinionated. Your opinion might differ from my own, but I wanna present my argument here. And my argument is that the actual feeding system of a firearm is vastly more important than the actual mechanical, mechanical uh, cycling of the firearm. Like for example, I have me my lever action uh, 357 Magnum right here. This is an Rossi 92, R92. Anyone who doesn't know anything about these lever actions, they got a Kingsgate on the side, tube magazine fed, and you cycle them with your lever action just like this. These can be made to fire very, very rapidly and for a long time. These right here were conceptually speaking, almost like the assault rifle back in the day. That is a topic for another video though. Let me grab some ammunition here. I don't wanna say thanks for the support, sorry for the interruption, but if uh, you do want to support what I'm doing here, uh, Utreon and Patreon, links in the description below. Obviously the things I'm doing here are not free. And if the more people that help out, the better content I'm able to make and the more often I'm able to make it. So like I said, links below. But let's say you're out and you're, you know, range running or doing whatever it is that you're doing. In order to load one of these lever actions, it takes a little while to load. Not as long as a muzzle loader, and this was a very fast system way back in the day, but not by today's standards. By today's standards, loading single rounds into a tubular magazine like this is an incredibly slow system. And although you can unleash quite a bit of hellfire very quickly here, You can unleash a lot of rounds downrange very quickly, especially if, you, if you're just like trying to launch lead versus, uh, you know, if you're just going bang, 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 bang versus, versus me, which, you know, I was actually making aim shots down on target. You can run out of ammunition in this very, very quickly. And although until that happens, you're going to be one hell of a force to be reckoned with. Once you run out of ammunition and you're in this particular case, like, 10 round tubular magazine, you have to sit there and you have to take the, you know, several moments it would take to actually reload your firearm versus let's say you had a lever action, same exact setup, but let's say it's chambered in nine millimeter and it takes Glock mags <laughs> somehow. Let's just say completely hypothetical, right? It takes Glock mags. So now you can reload that, you know, you press whatever magazine release is on that, pull that mag out, put a new one in, cycle your action, and you're back to running way, way faster than you would be in your reloading system of loading one single round at a time into your tubular magazine right there. And you can lay down a lot more fire a lot faster with the same exact mechanical system, just with a different feeding mechanism. Now let's push that concept even further. A manually operated firearm with a reloading and feeding system that is a very fast and efficient system is better than a semi-automatic firearm that has a slow feeding system. For example, our hypothetical lever action here, which no longer feeds by a Kingsgate, it feeds by a magazine that you insert into the bottom somehow. I would rather take something like that and having to, you know, manually cycle the action every single time over something like this. This is an SKS, and a lot of you people have seen this on the channel plenty of times. I've made a ton of videos on the SKS. But the SKS, everyone who knows, well, everyone who has ever loaded this with a stripper clip knows how finicky the stripper clips can be. And they can either be like really easy, just bam, loaded, good to go, let's go ahead, send some lead down range immediately. Or they could like get jammed up and you're over there trying to freaking finagle those mother... Yeah, it, it, I mean, they're inconsistent in terms of uh, how easy that they're going to be to load. Sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're not. Eh, like I said, very, very inconsistent. And it makes your reload time incredibly inconsistent as well. And God forbid you don't have stripper clips and you're over here trying to load your SKS one round at a time, much like I am because I did not bring stripper clips out for this example. Oh God, I just dropped around. Oh God, we're taking fire. Oh no, this is terrible. Fortunate sons playing in the background. <laughs> the trees are speaking Vietnamese. Hurry up and load. But in the time it takes you to load your magazine, I mean, it, like I said, this right here is going to be an inconsistent load. Sometimes it just rack right in from a stripper clip, other times not so much. But in the time it would take you to load 
an SKS in worst case scenarios, like a stripper clip that gets jammed up and you gotta freaking finagle that thing, or you're stuck single loading it. Somebody who has a lever action system that takes a magazine, you know, if they were reloading at the same time you were, they could get that out back in and get more rounds on target. Not only that, but in the amount of time that it would take for you to cycle that action, you don't gain much benefit from having a semi-automatic rifle. Now, there's a lot of uh, applications where a semi-automatic absolutely comes in handy, like in the event that you've got to put a lot of lead downrange, like really, really fast, like as fast as you can pull that trigger, then semi-automatic would absolutely be a better option to have than a lever action just because the rate of fire would absolutely be more. But a fast cycling of the lever action would be adequate enough to be able to handle that situation if you are skilled with a lever action. And I would take being able to reload that manually operated firearm way, way faster than the semi-automatic. I, I would take the lever action, the, <laughs> the manually reloading, uh, man well, manually operating uh, firearm that reloads very easily as opposed to a semi-automatic that does not. So I got a couple of rounds in this SKS, may as well send them down range here. Hey, we actually hit our steel. Hey, this thing's zeroed. Look at that. Ha, <laughs> fuck that steel. But lo and behold, actually I'll open this back up. Lo and behold, I fired my rounds and I fired them better and more effectively than I would have fired them from a lever action. But lo and behold, now I'm out of ammunition. And now, oh God, I have to load more ammunition in. And if it's a hassle, then hey, dude with lever action over here, he'll be able to get at you. And even if he's out of ammunition, then man, if he can reload that fast enough, like if that's a fast reload time, it doesn't matter. <laughs> man, like hopefully the concept <laughs> of what I'm getting at here is uh, at least something that a lot of people can understand and get behind. I would rather take a slower rate, harder to actually function firearm that reloads faster because you, in, in the long run, you'll be able to stick much more lead downrange. For example, I mean, semi-automatic, I was making accurate hits on shot, lever action, bang, bang. I'm not entirely sure where those rounds went, but I know it was in that general area. So we'll go ahead and we'll call that accurate enough fire if there was a person down there. I probably would have hit them. Now let's say I'm out of ammunition. SKS, that would take that would take some doing to reload. Magazine, bam, out, bam, in, cycle, back to, back to fire. It's an interesting concept, and I really like the concept. It doesn't necessarily have to be just with a lever action versus a semi-automatic. If you have yourself a bolt action that say takes AR mags or something like that. I would take the AR mag bolt action over, over like, let's say you had yourself a semi-automatic that was one round at a time, like an old hunting rifle semi-automatic that fed from some kind of tubular magazine that you had to load one at a time. I would take the AR mag bolt action over the semi-automatic one round at a time. Although the semi-automatic would be able to provide more fire in a faster sense, like it would be able to stick more rounds downrange very, very rapidly you would be able to reload that bolt action way, way faster than you'd be able to reload that tube-fed semi-automatic. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are down below, because I can't be the only one who thinks like this. So go down in the comments and let me know, would you rather have a semi-automatic that is slow to reload or a slower firing manually operated firearm that is fast to reload? I already made my uh, ideas on the concept concept pretty damn clear. So now it's your turn. Let me know what you guys think, think down below. Like the channel, or like the video, subscribe to the channel, description down below, link to all sorts of stuff, go check that out. I'm gonna see if I can find my 38 Special Brass here because I reload that stuff. And that's the only bad part about firing from a lever action. Whenever I'm firing and I'm flicking that thing around and my brass goes everywhere. So now I get to play Hunt the Brass. <laughs> to find me a, a fuddly elderly friend who would happily be out here all day policing brass with me. And by that I mean he would probably police all the brass. <laughs> That'd be very helpful. Thanks for watching folks. You guys go off, have yourself a fantastic day. Like I said, let me know what you guys' thoughts are down below. Here.
Let's get a bit of bonus footage here at the very end of the video. I want to figure out where this lever action is hitting it. Because I remember messing with it like, I don't know, a long time ago, several months at this point. And I think I remember fudging around with the sights. And I don't think I remember re-zeroing it afterwards. There you go. Put you guys right there so you can actually see the firearm cycling and in action. Well, I heard a clank. That's a good sign. It didn't sound like the clink of the steel though. It almost sounded like we hit the rim. That means I'm shooting high. Let me aim at the bottom of the target. I'm not sure where that one went either. <laughs> that still sounded like the rim. So the rim is to the, from my perception, to the right of the steel. And if I'm aiming low and still hitting the rim, maybe we're hitting right. I'm gonna aim at the left side of the target. All right, figured it out. <laughs> we are hitting right. Go ahead and confirm our zero here. Aha, zero confirmed. <laughs> and then one more final fuck you to our target. Okay, <laughs> all right, that's enough ammo. Ammunition nowadays has grown to the point of being quite expensive. So I did figure out my sights though. Fantastic, I'm glad I did that. Yeah, even looking at my front sight right here, I can clearly see that the front sight is not centered here. And is very clearly, I mean, it's very clearly drifted to the left, which certainly explains why we are hitting a little bit right. We zero that front sight, or recenter it, and we should be hitting right about where it is that we're wanting to hit. So I'll have to make sure that I do that. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garen. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream. 